Oh my gosh, look what he's doing now. He's hunting down the Wuzzy Wuzu. The Wuzu at least should have immunity. He's the only one left in our community. Hey gang, Uncle Todd here, along with Sonny, and we're up to our second special for this Halloween. Uh, Halloween is Grinch Night, uh, also known as It's Grinch Night, and just Grinch Night. Now, uh, this was a Halloween special from 1977, although Halloween is never mentioned in the entire special. Uh, due to the fact that uh, Boris Karloff had died like eight or nine years previously, uh, another uh, actor was brought in, Hans Conried, who uh, did uh, a lot of voiceover work uh, and was uh, also an actor. He's probably best remembered for playing the villain in Dr. Seuss's the 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. That was uh, his only live action film, or Dr. Seuss's only live action film, as well as films like The Twonky, and uh, of course one of my favorites, uh, The Monster That Challenged the World, in which he played a scientist in that one. But yeah, the uh, same year, 77, he also had uh, a part in the Rankin and Bass animated version of The Hobbit, which very popular that year. I loved The Hobbit. Never heard of uh, J.R.R. Tolkien up till then. Uh, and of course, like previous specials, this one has a lot of music. Uh, there's also, I think, nine songs in this, and it's only like a 25 minute, uh, half hour show. Uh, uh, it seems to be a prequel, but I'm not sure. Uh, you, you'll see uh, as we go through it. Uh, we get uh, Whoville, and they notice a sour wind is coming in, and that's bad. All the Greek grumps start a growling. Growling and that howling runkles and grunkles up the pond. Howling and that growling, that always disturbs the hack and cracks. And the hack and cracks start a yowling. And the yowling then always irritates the witch. And then that witch starts in a brawling. Well, of course, the who's of Whoville, uh have a normal reaction to all this. So, while everyone is cowering in their homes, the Grinch gets a little poetic. It's a wonderful night for eyebrows. After proclaiming it being Grinch night and pontificating about all the nasty things he's going to do, he then calls everyone's favorite character. Max! Max, go bring the paraphernalia wagon. wonder what's in there. It is something spooky. Well, 
while the Grinch and Max are heading down the mountain, uh, our main Whoville family called to check with the, what is it called, the Grinch alarm system. Your Grinch alarm warden, Sergeant Samuel S. McPherson. It is my duty to inform you if conditions improve or if they worsen. I have infiltrated his territory, keeping sharp eyes upon this schnook. And I'm focusing my focusella to take still another look. Oh, it is terrible. The Grinch is destroying all the plants as he goes by. And, and going after animals. In fact, he's chasing the last woozel in existence. But the things don't quite go the way the Grinch hoped. The Grinch has gotten a prickle from the bramble bush. <laughs> well, we then switch to our uh, protagonist, as it were, Yukariah. He's a small little, very intelligent who. Uh, you can tell this because he has glasses. And he decides he's got to go to the euphemism. And his family says, no, 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 you can't go. But no, I must. I must go to the euphemism. But the wind is just a little too strong for him. Pretty strong wind. Well, after we cut the commercial and come back, he's blown up to the mountain. And he starts walking. And guess who he comes upon? Nice doggy. Poor lost doggy. I'm gonna take you home with me. If I ever find it again. <gasps> brickle eyes me, will they? I'll brickle eyes the entire township. I of course, the uh, Grinch takes notice of Eukariah. And he and Eukariah kind of banter a bit. I have a slight astigmatism, an optical condition in which parallel rays of light from an external source converge or diverge unequally in different meridians. You know, sir, I like you much better with my glasses off. You put your glasses back on! The Grinch decides to have a little fun with Eukariah and scares him by having his eyebrows detached while he sings a song. Then after this, he's realized he's running behind schedule. Out of my way, small who. I got bigger things to do than to waste my time with you. It's at this point, Eukariah decides he's got to stall the Grinch to keep him from getting to his family and the rest of Whoville. So he kind of uh, improvises. Blocking the Grinch's way, Eukariah asks him to be scared again. He kind of liked it. Kid, I gave you the two dollar treatment. You're not worth a first class Grinching. Deciding the kid is of no importance, the Grinch heads out once again, and Eukariah sleds himself back in front of his path a second time. Okay, you asked for it. And then the Grinch opens the wagon. And 
Sorry I couldn't show you most of it. A lot of singing. But uh, if you've ever seen the old Warner's cartoon um, Porky in Wackyville or uh, you know, some of those 60s films, the, the real psychedelic ones, kind of like that. Well, after... Uh, his travail, Eukariah has noticed something. Hmm. You know something, Mr. Grinch? Why? Well, sir, as I knew it would, sir, the sour sweet wind is dying down. No wind ever blows forever. Yep. The Grinch has been outsmarted. Hmm. Well, I'll be grinched. With no wind, the animals aren't uh, upset. And if they're not upset, the Grinch isn't going to be irritated with their noise. So, he has no choice but to return back up to the top of the mountain. And then, it takes an Odd twist. Come on, Max, turn this wagon around. <laughs> well, now this is confusing because if this is a prequel to Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Max should still be with him because he's in that one. And if this is a sequel, what turned the Grinch bad again? Or did Max feel bad about leaving the Grinch and went back so that he, he'd have the... I don't know. Anyway, the Grinch starts his way back up the mountain when he has an epiphany. I'm sure gonna miss that Grinch night ball, but that wind will be coming back someday. I'll be coming back someday. <laughs> and then, uh, as we head towards the end uh, all the folks of Whoville sing in celebration that the Grinch has left and Eukariah and Max are made heroes for what they did and thus Whoville was safe for a while until the Grinch decided to reappear uh, that would actually be about uh, five years later in 1982 with the uh, the Grinch Grinch's the cat in the hat which unfortunately uh, they had to get another voice actor because Hans Conried was ill and he would die uh, that year as well so a little sad there but this is the only Grinch Dr. Seuss special where the Grinch did not have a, a change of heart and become good at the end. Uh, I suppose because it was uh, intended as a prequel or it was more in keeping with the uh, time of year it was going to be shown. Uh, this was the first special that was done by Dr. Seuss Enterprises. Uh, before that, they had all been done by Cat and Hat Productions. And 
this one is not as good as the uh, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Um, it doesn't have as interesting a story for me, and the music's not as memorable. And although Hans Conrad is a good actor, it's hard to come onto a project that had been started by Boris Karloff. The comparison was just too much, but uh, yeah, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's not great. Uh, I couldn't show a lot of footage because you can't go a couple minutes without somebody singing. So, and none of the songs are really that good. Well, I already said that they're not that memorable. Yeah, all in all, it was a okay special but not one I'd want to watch every year sorry but uh, they can't all be gems I guess well please hit like share and subscribe and stay after the credits for my favorite scene Got it. <laughs>